<laughs> it's like you got us these musicians. Uh, now let me you tell you what's going on in my Instagram DMs right now. Hi, oh, Douglas Logarian here by request. Josh Obaye for collaboration with the Internet is Dead podcast. Please, Josh, be a guest on the podcast. We miss you. Number one, a boy is telling me about his experience with going underneath in surgery and unlocking different parts of his mind. And then Ew. in my DMs with Sean Henry, I'm like, do you and Sam Ray want to do a starry cat boy crush show? <laughs> Wait, who's and he's like, yeah, who's the first guy? Wait, he's actually cool, though, because he posted, you know, when I was joking about how, like, if I went under Anastasia, I'd like die because like I would accidentally go too far in my head. Yeah. He like posted the same thing saying that he did Whoa. that. And then I like, oh, my God, tell me what happened. Oh, <laughs> my God. I just feel like he's going to hate us. I'm in an Ariana Grande shirt. I'm sure the that the. The the founder of Julia's War Records isn't going to appreciate my Ariana Grande Yours Truly shirt for what it is. It's like I know that that's staying in the episode. Tag of is like saying is like the ABC. Oh, have girl. to pee. No, don't leave me. Wait, I have to really quick. Girl, happens. She always leaves me, and she has to go pee. And then it's like I'm here, and it's like, what if he just enters? And it's like, okay. So I'm supposed to talk to this guy alone. It's like, look at me. What do I know about tag about? Nothing. I didn't even know. Hi. Yo, what's up? Oh, let me get my phone. Whoa, you're blue. I you're know. So blue. I don't know what's going on. I uh, kind of like the cop. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, what's Whoa. up? Hi. How y'all doing? Good. Good. How is uh, moving your friend? You know, uh, it sucked. It's it, moving yeah. is like the worst experience I feel like you can go through as a human. Uh, yeah. I used to have this friend that would say like, you know who your real friends are when you have to move. Oh, I get Pretty that because whenever I have to move, I like freak out about having to like take my items off my desk and put them in a box and then put them back on my desk. <laughs> <It sucks. laughs> no, <Terrible. we're>, no. <laughs> Good. We were, Hell yeah. Oh, what we should talk about before you got on here. And we were like, oh, we should tell this story where um, <laughs> Samira, you want to tell it really quick? yeah Here. it's kind of like imagine this get the mindset POV, though. yeah yeah you have to like okay. really pretend, imagine. pretend this is you yeah okay. picture or it's or there. a friend of yours you know well okay. this happened at west philly's porch fest that's an important part of the story because mm -hmm. this would only happen at porch fest <laughs> but um Two real people yeah people we know but pov you see a pretty girl and you want to ask her on a date she's got bangs she's got a cool outfit on and then she doesn't know what tag about is so then you can't ask her on a date anymore. <laughs> Oof, I don't know. It's happened to me a million times. <laughs> no, I could see that happening like, to you. Oh, you play in a band? <laughs> I don't even like to bring it up. I don't know, like in like, like uh, recovery and everything else in my life. I don't even really talk about that. But yeah, I don't know. That's funny. That's <laughs> that... no, we thought it would be funny to share. Oh, yeah. oh, no, no, that is funny. That is funny, yeah, I guess. That's happened to me with like, Alex G. Oh, really? You, <laughs> like, you're yeah. not going to date like, a girl. She doesn't know who Alex G is. Uh, yeah, just never date a person who like, you're like, wait, hold on. You don't even, you don't know. Like, it's cool if you never <laughs> checked it out or something. But yeah. You don't even know. It's like, we exist in totally different worlds. And I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> I know? think that I need someone who's never listened to Alex G in their <laughs> life. <laughs> I think that that's what I'm looking for in a man. <laughs> Yeah. yeah that's 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 real i get that for sure yeah. <laughs> especially in a man in a man yeah. it's a little different no you know in a girl I mean? it's like okay she's yeah. cool it is like weird how that works with like attaching yourself to roles and things like attaching yourself to a role in a band because i feel like mm -hmm. we even have that where it's like talking about like having a podcast it's like i don't want to talk about having a podcast yeah, yeah it's, it's like strange. a weird thing it's uh Truthfully, like, it's not who I am. I guess it's, like, a way to, like, express myself and everything. But realistically, it's just, like, there are multitudes to who I am as a human being. And I just don't think that, like, me being, like, hey, a lot of people fuck with my music is a cool opener at all. It just doesn't, that doesn't work. When people have that thought process, it's, like, interesting because it's, like, 
I don't know. It's like a weird ego thing, but I think it's interesting because we talk a lot about like the roles that people take on, like, and associating yourself with that role and being like, oh, that's my identity. And it's a really interesting thing because when you're like successful at something, it's like, I think really hard and freaky to like get that kind of idea out of your head. Yeah, um, no, for sure. I yeah. mean, it's definitely like, a, um, it's a weird, uh, it's a weird mentality to contend with honestly because like that's the other thing too i don't think that fame in any uh in any way has ever been good to anybody i don't think that like i mean you think of like the you know the the classic examples of that like you know kanye west michael jackson i i just don't think it's good for like it doesn't like help you grow as a person and I don't know I think that's something I try to like keep at the forefront of my mind in the end regard like this shit like also like I'm not in any way shape or form like famous and I think if I if I ever was I think one of the things I got to keep at the forefront of my mind is that like I'm just a schmuck and like <laughs> I have like so many shortcomings just as a person it's hard to wake up and do things in the morning you know what I mean like I can't yeah. when you start thinking of yourself as like a god you're fucked <laughs> yeah. like, kind of I don't know I think it's like fascinating because that's like also part of the reason why we like started this podcast because I think we're really fascinated by the idea of like what that does to a human being's brain and like especially internet fame because it's like a new kind of fame that we don't know exactly, exactly how to navigate yeah. in the same way also hold on I'm gonna like do an intro <laughs> really quickly but um welcome back everyone to the internet is dead podcast also known as the Joshua Valle please be a guest on my podcast podcast uh today we're joined by tag about aka Doug aka uh Julia's war record <laughs> yeah. thanks for thanks for coming on by the way yeah, for sure Absolutely. um Tagabelle is kind of like knowing your abcs dude no no it's not, not true no i'm just like maybe in my mind <laughs> how much of it is just the idea that like i hate myself and i'm like uh nobody could possibly like this you know what i mean like it's like it's weird to think about like no there's a very real thing that like this thing has been connecting with people and that's not to say that like I haven't been working really hard to to get it to this point um and maybe I deserve I just I do not like as a person I don't really give myself permission to like be stoked on myself a whole lot you know yeah. which I, I don't know if that's like counterproductive or if it's like um I I, I feel like it's more counterproductive almost yeah. like a um it's almost like a survival skill gone wrong. You know, it's like yeah. an instinct. It's like an instinct to be like, you need to be better all the time. And then just getting to this point where it's like, you're still not good enough. <laughs> and like, mm. uh, not to say like, I'm a fully self-hating person. I, I I love myself to a large degree, but like also just, you know, it's uh, especially in the sphere of music. I don't know. I think that's also important too, because you don't want to like, shortchange the community and you don't want to like I feel like a lot of the credit the credibility or you know whatever amount of credibility that I have is really kind of due to the community I love the community that I fucking exist in and I love my friends and so I don't know I try to see myself in a smaller position in that I'm sounding so corny right now no I no well yeah. I think like the thing you're talking about is really interesting because I was thinking about this like the other night because me and a friend were having a conversation about like you know like what we were talking about before about like roles and like the way like even just like the idea of talking about something that you do and you've been successful at is a really odd thing because then in a certain way being like oh it's like weird I don't want to talk about it because like I like I don't know like I think it like is like a really odd thing to like be perceived talking about something that you're doing but at the same time I was like wondering the other day because I was journaling about this like if it's almost doing the same thing as talking about it to be like I don't want to talk about or like to be like I I'm like humble yeah. about this thing yeah. which yeah, is there's weird. gotta be like dude there's gotta be like a, a, like a balance. middle ground yeah. somewhere where you're mm -hmm. just like 
yeah, I'm in a band. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's all that it is. It doesn't have to be like, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's but it is weird. also a really cool thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, yeah, that's the other thing, too, is like, you know, if you told me when I was 16 that what I'm doing, what I'm doing now, I'd be like, what? You know, I wouldn't be able to believe it. So it's mm. there's got to be again. I mean, it comes back to like, I got to be able to give myself permission to be happy about something. Sometimes I relish in that when somebody's like, wow, you're in tag about and I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like most of the time, I just like don't. It's but when it comes to dating, like, no. Emily, who I who I've been who I've been dating for like three years, who plays in Tag Row. Um, it's kind of funny, like uh the way that we met was really funny too. Uh we like matched on Tinder probably like five times throughout the pandemic. Wow. And then the last time, and she she's from like this world of like hardcore. Um, mm -hmm. she does she went to a lot of hardcore shows growing up. She grew up in Wilkes Bear. Um she doesn't know anything about like indie rock or like shoegaze or anything like that and uh so after like the fifth time well after like the fourth time that we matched we had like tried to meet up or whatever it was the pandemic there's a lot going on mm -hmm. and um basically the last after the fourth time she came to a show at my house and I didn't charge her Cause I knew like who she was. <laughs> yeah. And That's then, such a funny move to make too. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's really not it's good. It's like, no, the, you're, you're in. Not, it's like, no, yeah, no, yeah. you can just it's come really right in. not good for the community. Right. Like, <laughs> but so it's, then, it's like, like, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then we matched like a fifth time and I was like, uh, my opening was line was like, you owe me $10. And like, that was how like, we started <laughs> literally like uh and I think she thought it was funny and then she was like what's the name of your band and I was like oh you know whatever what was the time frame of like both of you like coming here because she you I, said she lived in Wilkes-Barre I know you lived in New York yeah she probably got here in 2016 mm -hmm. um which is like right around the time that I got here you know what's mad funny is that we lived um we lived uh like a block away from each other for like six years Aww. and like That's never cool. never met each other or anything and then eventually it was just like oh yeah and that's the thing about like west philly tinder is you see the same <laughs> yeah. that is the thing with west philly. Oh my God, <laughs> that's so yeah. funny that's what we were thinking we were in because we were in new york recently and we were like just there was like so many people on the streets and we were like tinder in new york is probably a crazy thing because yeah. yeah it's like you see someone on tinder and then you probably won't see them on the street and i feel like that yeah. doesn't happen in philly nah nah you're seeing the same people all the time yeah. it's like here we go again yeah. <laughs> wait but it's also cool that you guys well, like we talk about this all the time like me and samira do about how it seems like the right people are always just kind of they're like around you and then they don't enter your life until like the they're time like is waiting. right so that's like a really cool yeah. thing that's really yeah. pretty there's, there's some uh i'm not i don't want to get fully deep into this especially on a podcast but um yeah there's some uh there's some greater plan at play that i don't fully understand and i think even if it's just like you know shit like that like if if emily had met me even a year before she met me it just it just wouldn't have worked out it's mm -hmm. just not uh I was in a different place things just happen when they need to you know yeah. it's, it's, it's weird the way that shit like that works too sometimes you'll go through like a heart breaking breakup just like it'll destroy you and gut you and then like two years later you're like wait that happened exactly the way that it needed to you know what I mean yeah um yeah it's weird I think about that a lot with like things that I think uh you know, like just major life things that have happened that were really painful. It's like, actually, that was like exactly what needed to happen at that moment. Mm. It's hard to remember that during, it all makes sense later. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it was a cool thing. But I love her. We're coming up on three years this month. Aww. So, uh, yeah. Wait, congrats. That's so yeah, sweet. That's really yeah. sweet. Aww. Yeah, that's cool. Um, do you feel like you've experienced that same feeling in relation to your experience with starting Tagabell and moving to Philly? Definitely. Um, when I first moved here, and I think I said this 
last time that I'd spoken to you. When I first moved here, it was really cold. It was a way different place. Um, uh, it was just a way different um, community when I when I had moved here. And um, yeah, it was it was rough, dog. Like I ha I didn't have a lot of friends, and uh, but like those couple of years of just like nobody caring about what I was doing uh kind of pushed me to be like okay i'm gonna fucking i'm gonna i have to do this uh better or like find something that's like more true mm -hmm. and i think um i was able to do that so i think and i think that only happened with like the hardships of like moving here or whatever you know but yeah it's really weird i don't know there's a lot of uh there's a lot of things that happen a lot that just you know it's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. For instance, um, just like things you talk about on records and, and stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, that's that was that, you know, that had to happen at that time because that was what I, I needed to I needed to talk about it. So, yeah, there's also something I think like you're almost destined to share with someone. Like yeah. I think about that a lot with like making art and writing and music and stuff like that, where I think it's it's not even just for like a greater purpose for you, but it's to share with other people who are probably dealing with the same thing. Yeah, certainly. I think uh, past a certain point, the music is really no longer yours either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, with just like releasing things and then like coming back to it like three years later or whatever, it just, it, it always takes on a life of its own. Destiny XL, you know what I mean? Like we made that shit like five years ago or whatever. And those are still primarily the songs that we play live. And the things that we're writing now, like it, Lucky Styles, a lot of that is just really hard to play live. We just can't, um, we just can't, we can't play a lot of it live because it's a lot of key parts and a lot of, you know, there's only four of us. Um, but uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's weird just because like, you know, over time, um just like the way that destiny presents itself in my mind I'm like that's the best thing I've ever made I'm never gonna be able to top that but realistically it's like the songs that I'm writing right now are in fact way better and more mature than that but it's gonna take a whole other three years of playing them out to be like yeah these are really good you know what I mean like, yeah it's just like those are the songs that like you know we started we played in in basements too like and this sounds so oh my god i hate myself <laughs> um, <laughs> being like yo we came from the basement like that's <laughs> the worst vibe ever but you know like for real we played to like five people in a basement and now we're playing to like a lot of fucking people and and those songs saw me through that period mm -hmm. I also it's don't also think that's, like, a weird thing to say because it's, like, no. a cool thing for people to hear, too, who are coming from that Yeah, space. I mean, yeah. definitely, yeah. I mean, for yeah. what it's worth, like, if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> you know, right? Like, for real. Uh, and it's not, I don't know. I'm not doing anything, like, really crazy or whatever. I just, like, worked really hard and never stopped. Um, but that being said, yeah, those songs, you know, I, like they saw me through that whole period. So they mean a lot to me and they mean differently. What's trippy is like, they mean something different than they did when I wrote them. You know what I mean? They were about mm -hmm. this person that I was like infatuated with, like all of them were on destiny. And now they're just not really about that for me at all. It's, it's interesting. It's just uh, it's weird the way that, it's weird what time does to you but yeah real, you know no that's a cool thing though because I feel like you have that even listening to music where you'll listen to it during a specific yeah. time in your life and it'll mean something and you're like this is my entire world right now this is so big and then you listen to it later and it just means something completely different I feel like Straight that's up. a really cool thing it's really weird when you're the one making it you know that's that's a a, a mind fuck it's like you're like what is this even i don't even know what this means to me anymore or mm -hmm. like you know you'll remember like one performance that like meant a lot where that song felt really good and that was like a, a really important thing and then you're like and then you'll think about it in that light forever 
you know um mm. but yeah there's a lot of i i i all i honestly that's one of the the hardest parts about being somebody who loves music and goes through human experiences is that like dude sometimes you just can't revisit things you know what i mean in relation to what you're saying about kind of things like shifting i'm curious since you you're older than we are you're like i think you're in your 30s right yeah yeah um but i know that the online space was a lot different when you were starting out in music and you probably had a very different experience um with uh, than we've had like watching things evolve and especially music in the art scene and how things like like become big online and i'm curious um in talking about kind of like evolution of like things changing throughout like your like artistic career how you've witnessed that change like online and how it's affected you as a person and as an artist so dude i mean like you know i grew up in the 90s and i was i was coherent during all of it i mean i remember it and i remember the first time i ever saw a website on something and it was on a goosebumps book and i was oh, i love one. goosebumps yeah rocks <laughs> so that theme song for goosebumps is like oh my god yeah the best theme song ever. the <laughs> it's like little so good. sound anyway um but yeah it was on a goosebumps book and it was like www.goosebumps.com and i remember asking my mom i was like what is this what it oh. doesn't even make sense and within like four years we had a computer and you gotta understand like in 2002, 2003, the internet was a completely different place. It has become mm -hmm. this thing that is like strictly marketing and strictly like um, trying to get you to buy things. But in the beginning, it wasn't really like that. It was like this like free for all of just like Wild West. And like, to be honest, I mean, I try to like tap into that spirit in the music that I make too, because it's mm -hmm. like, a lot of this stuff, you know, there's a lot of bands that they just do like the same ass um, release cycle and the same ass like whatever, whatever. And I think like, you know, there's ways to kind of like uh, combat that or, 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 or be different about it. And I think the spirit of the early internet is something that like really I try to carry with me. I yeah it's just it, so like pure like and genuine yeah. I think yeah. and that's why people like still like crave how yeah yeah yeah, sure. yeah that's really real I mean that's why like all that like strict like html shit is like hype right now it's just because mm -hmm. like there's yeah. a vibe there's a vibe there that um but like neo cities pages yeah <laughs> oh my yeah, god exactly yeah there's a vibe that like <laughs> no longer exists in a lot of ways you mm. know you like open up instagram and like you know what you're gonna get dog you know you're gonna get like timu advertisements and shit you know it, it wasn't always like that it was like you'd stumble upon some weird thing where you're like what the f what is this it's so mm. so i don't know i think that's like a a principle of uh creation for me right now but also yo i will say it's it was cool like growing up with the internet watching it because when I was yeah. like old enough to listen to music, I like that was like my own. It was like MP3 players and 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 the first like yeah. iPods and shit, you know. And uh, it's been so crazy to watch it kind of grow and change into this thing where you just do from your phone, you know. That's a big thought too. Like I always listen to mixes on my phone, almost like first like mm -hmm. because a monitor you know a monitor in a studio will make anything sound good but like your phone is really what how people are gonna like that's how people are gonna listen to it so is it the the, the changing of technology is not necessarily like a, a negative thing per se it was cool to like grow up in the age of the golden internet you know it was like yeah it was it was wild yeah there was like dude there was a time where you know i was a child and we'd play N64 games and shit. And your homie at school would tell you some wild shit about the game. <laughs> and you'd believe it. Because like, yeah. there's no way to yeah. check. There yeah, no, bad. I remember that kind of stuff Damn. with like online multiplayer worlds where like mm -hmm. someone would tell you like, because for us, I feel like the thing was like Webkins and Club Penguin. Yeah, and like, and, like 
Pop Tropica kind of. Yeah. And like people would tell you, like, if you log out Neopets onto Webkins, then yeah. Miss Birdie's going to show up on yeah. your doorstep yeah. and stack your yeah. animals. Dude, yeah. I remember the OG Pokemon. I remember being at this like latchkey after school thing and this fool telling me about like this character in the OG Pokemon called Missing No. And it was like this, like, it was like a glitch in the game, but you could like, multiply your items by like 99 and i remember like <laughs> when it actually worked i was like oh my god it like unlocked this like magical thing in my brain where i was mm -hmm. just like holy shit the world is magic you know what yeah I mean? yeah and, and that's the thing is like i think a lot of that's gone now i talk to my homie all the time this fool dan and he always says like you know the art of argument is just dead you know like you can't be like at at a party or something and somebody's like nah brace harper went over 14 in the last you know 14 at bats and you're like that's not true you can immediately like go look it up you know yeah, I mean? yeah. no that and is a really interesting thing it's weird yeah it's weird to just have like the world at your fingertips but there's a lot of cool things about that too i mean i'd definitely be using the rhyming dictionary a lot <laughs> yeah or, you know, well, know what you were saying about like growing up and like kind of I mean it's interesting because I feel like for us too like me and Samira we were like kids but like we weren't kids for that long until the internet came yeah. and like for you it's like you were kind of a person and then the internet came yeah. like, so, like at least more than we were yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like a very interesting um like comparison and then it's like interesting to think about kids now who are literally just being born straight into it and it's like oh, yeah. do you give them that like because it, it is just like different now but yeah, yeah I I also wanted to ask you so like in with that like same perspective do you feel like it's had an impact on music and the art scene and specifically like tag about and even like how you like run like Julia's war do you feel like it's yeah. like sh shifted for you yeah, I mean, obviously, totally. it's, like, a lot different than what it would have looked like if you, like, did these things back then before the internet was such, like, an important thing. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for what it's worth, I would have done, um, you know, if this was the 90s, I would have done the same thing and just toured a lot. And I think in a lot of ways that would have worked. But also just the accessibility of the internet. I mean, I I remember in like the year 2000 or 2001, there's this rapper named Aesop Rock. And um, he like wouldn't have been anything without the internet. And he really capitalized on the internet in general at that time and what it was like capable of. And he realized what it was capable of. Um, and now, you know, yeah, I mean, I couldn't function. That's the thing is like, that's the thing about technology is like you either get with it or you die. And it's like, you, 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 I, I have friends now that like, will be like, Oh, I'm going to go back to using a flip phone. And I'm like, that's cool. But like, you're missing out dog. You I never see you at shows anymore. You don't yeah. know when anything's happening, you know? And like, that's the thing is like, there are real world implications to the technology that we use that I think are really cool. I mean, like, now I know when all my homies are are putting out records. Now I know, you know, I can tap in. I and, and it takes very minimal effort, you know. Whereas, you know, in the 80s, 70s or whatever, you had to go buy the record. It's like now I can just fucking listen to it on my phone and it's like, oh, this is cool, or it's not cool. You know what I mean? Whatever. Um, in reality, the truth is is like I'm I'm super down with technology. I think it's phenomenal it's so mm. cool to just be able to like make music all day on my own and not need to like have a record label advance and have to go to the studio well and I also think yeah especially running a label or a podcast like y'all are doing you know what I mean it's mm. like uh it's impossible without it at this point you know what I'm well, saying it's crazy because we talk about this a lot with how there's just so many opportunities and it's like there's this whole world that exists for you through the internet that like almost opens up for you with just like the way that people have blown up and like gotten big and stuff online 
And it's just like a crazy thing. And it's also crazy, like what you were saying about how you have friends that are like, oh, like want to go back to flip phones and stuff like that. Because it's also insane how quickly and like, like just how quickly the internet has become integrated and in literally everything in life. And I know that sounds like yeah. pretty obvious, but I was thinking about even like just with school and stuff, like how if you're like in elementary school or middle school or high school, like your entire curriculum is basically online now, like with yeah. like, and that's like a crazy thing also. Yeah, it's crazy. Yo, the other day, uh, like probably like two, three weeks ago, some, I don't even remember. I was in New York. And I thought about this. I was like, dude, I think, and this is an interesting thing. And I don't, you know, whatever. It's not necessarily a conspiracy theory or anything like that. But I, it's a theory that I have. Um, Google Maps kind of became something that was, or, 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 or even like Apple Maps became something popular in, you know, 2008 through now whatever and that's also the same time that you saw um rapid gentrification of new york city which because like back in the day dude you know i remember like going to the city with my friends i grew up in new york and new jersey um so i grew up on like either side of new york and and you know we'd go there all the time we'd also like go to philly or whatever but um you know i I remember like my parents being like, yo, do not take the train when you're in New York. Cause it's like, it was riddled with crime. It was, it was just a totally different thing than it is now. And I feel like it's also incredibly confusing. If you don't know where you're going in New York, you're, you're fucked. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, I need to, I need to like transfer four times to get from one side of the city to the other. So I think that like they that like technology and things like that have a hand in gentrification as well. You know, like people were not taking the train the way that they mm. were in the nineties. People were not taking the train unless you like knew where you were at. And then if you move to New York, you can just take the fucking train now. You don't have to, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, yeah. So there's like so many things like that, but then also I think something that all three of us experienced and that the whole world experienced that was really interesting was like the pandemic and how technology really held us down through that whole thing. I mean, we were like going to school in our own houses. Mm -hmm. We were ordering food um, to our houses. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there yeah. was so much that just like, and then there's other cool things that happen. Like uh, what's the name of that? Like uh, you like the scavenger hunt app that like uses uh oh uh like neo uh geo tracking yeah, that thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Stuff, like shit like that you know what i mean yeah. so i don't know it's it's interesting i i do think uh technology just makes everything more capable but there's this point where i was in new york like three weeks ago and i like was listening to music on my phone i bought a train ticket back to philly and as soon as i got home I like got an Uber and this all took like, you know, two minutes a piece for yeah. every, each thing. And I was just like, that's crazy. Cause I remember when, you know, being, being younger and just being like, you'd have to, you'd have to use a, you know, I suppose you'd have to use a pay phone and call a taxi or hail a taxi cab and, yeah. or, and wait for that to work. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's, crazy technology no. crazy. i've like no we've said this before with like how our parents um like both Brittany and i's moms are just like super like freaked out about like traveling and whenever we go places and stuff and they just like have a ton of anxiety about it and how a big part of it is because when they were going places it was like because now it's like you go on the subway and you just look on your phone and it tells you exactly like what train to transfer to and like when you get off and it like shows you a live location and everything and like it's so easy to call an uber and stuff and back when they were traveling it was like they had to like pull out a map and like look yeah, at everything you know. yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, my gps is still so new to my mom like she's no, still same. like yeah. it's so like she forgets because she'll text me sometimes she'll like be driving and she's like i'm lost and i'm like but you <laughs> aren't lost because you can just yeah. like do it on your yeah. own and yeah. then she remembers Dude, that's that. the other thing, you know like i think touring in the modern sphere is really capable because of technology you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying i mean mm -hmm. even when i started touring it was like 
we were just like cold DMing people on Facebook that somebody else told us to DM. They were like, yeah, for Richmond, hit up this person. And then we would just cold DM people and it like ended up working out. But back in the day, you know, when touring started, like modern DIY touring, like Black Flag was calling the next venue from a payphone and being mm -hmm. like, hey, can we play there tomorrow? You know what I mean? And it's yeah. just like uh totally different um thing. Yeah, there's a really good uh curb your enthusiasm bit about this where like like trying to it's like early on it's like one of the first couple episodes where he's trying to get to his friend's house and his friend gives him like bad directions and i don't even know you gotta watch it it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really okay good. yeah also i wanted to comment about what you said like a little bit ago about the like with covid and technology because i had the thought like COVID literally couldn't have happened until like right now because of the technology that we have like not to sound crazy because like if a virus like that <laughs> came like a, like years ago then obviously like you know we do whatever we had to do to deal with it but I think that the reason it, like it, it was approached in the way it was was even mm -hmm. because we could just function and be connected to one another from our houses which is really really freaky to think yeah. about because I think that yeah, like changed yeah, the yeah. entire approach to it. This sounds trippy, but like COVID was really good to me. <laughs> it sounds bad, but like, it's also like, that was a time of reflection. And I like had this really bad arm injury. We put out Destiny XL in October of 20, I don't even know, 2019 or something. Um, and then COVID hit literally like five months later. And I had this horrible arm injury where I couldn't play guitar at all. And it gave me the time to heal up and get better and reflect. And um, also people started paying attention to what I was doing during that time, which is really weird because nobody cared before COVID. It was like, it was, I don't even know. It was just uh, really trippy. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, I mean, yeah, it honestly, like it would have happened. I mean, and it, and it has happened in history mm -hmm. plenty of times. But I don't think people really knew how to deal with it. You know, there's like tuberculosis um, yeah. in the last century. There's, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, I, I just think the way that it played out was really interesting because it was so modern. It, mm -hmm. was so, it was so of the time. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to also ask, like, with tag about growing an audience and like talking about like being connected to people do you feel like like I'm curious from your perspective perspective what it looked like for an audience to grow around tag about because do you feel like it started out as word of mouth or it was more so in the online sphere because I know like now I feel like there's like both of those things behind yeah. tag about as a band I don't know. This is an interesting question. I would say, again, I think this comes back to like what we were talking about early on. And it's like, to be honest, my my interpretation of this whole thing and the way that it goes down, is completely skewed. It's like <laughs> I, I literally sometimes yeah, you were I saying have, that before. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have no idea. Sometimes it's yeah. like a, we'll like do a merch drop and I'm like, oh, cool. We're we're going to be we're going to pay rent it'll be all right. But you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question just mm -hmm. because I don't, I don't think I have a firm grasp on what it even is half the time. Yeah. I know that sounds dumb. It's just like, no, but that makes sense. I feel like I just well, don't, it's weird yeah. to put in perspective as someone doing the thing. Yeah. <laughs> it is really, really weird. And yeah. I don't know, I feel like from like our perspective, it's like, if you like think about Philly DIY, it's like, well, <laughs> it's yeah. like, okay, tag about like, and <laughs> like everyone, like all of our peers around us are like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> about it, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I know the feeling from the other side, for sure. Mm -hmm. I remember feeling like that about fucking Blue Smiley and yeah. mm -hmm. Spirit of the Beehive and mm -hmm. being like, yo, that's the craziest thing. So I don't really know. I think. Uh, well, the iterations think, of that are really funny too. Like yeah, it just, it's all like, just goes a in a cycle. cycle. Yeah. It is uh, just a cycle. It's just a constant cycle. And 
you know, that's the thing too, is like, I've been thinking a lot about like longevity and what does that look like and what does that do? And I think the key to that for me is really just like participating in the community with Julius War. Cause mm -hmm. I think like there's going to come a time, you know, whether it's 10 years or 20 years where I'm like, I don't really want to fucking tour anymore, dude. Like I'm, I'm, it's already grading, you know what I mean? It's already mm -hmm. difficult to do. Um, how do I stay involved and make it something positive you know and I think uh that really just comes down to you know working with other people because there's constantly going to be like new people there's constantly going to be like mm -hmm. people making bands and stuff like that which is exciting and I'll find out about it because of the internet could you like kind of summarize <laughs> your experience with Julia's war of like from from starting it to now how you've seen it grow or just like what it even means to you like what the ide initial idea was yeah dude i don't dude again this is like one of those you know like <laughs> we were talking about earlier my homie hit me up in march 2020 um i hadn't got unemployment yet <laughs> just funny um <laughs> i hadn't got unemployment yet and i was basically just like really screwed and um, he was like, yo, listen, and he's like a scientist and he makes a lot of fucking money. And he was like, listen, I want to start this label, but I want you to run it. <laughs> um, and I want, cause like, I know you're good at curating and whatever. And I had booked a lot of shows for this guy and he was a friend of mine and whatever. I was like, all right, yeah, I'm down. And he was like, I'll pay you like a hundred bucks a week. And I was like, okay, cool, I'll do it. And he would pay for like the tapes or whatever. So we did that like first run of like maybe like six or seven tapes. And then I got my unemployment check, which was like insane amount of money. So I just bought him out of it. You know what I mean? I was just like, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'll just take it. <laughs> and now I'm just like still doing it and hemorrhaging money. But it's again, like one of those things that like at the time just presented itself. Like I didn't, you know what I mean? Like I didn't yeah. come up with I wasn't like, yo, I'm going to start a label. Like, that was not how this happened. It was yeah. just like, he was like, yo, here's a cool little opportunity. Do you want to try this? And I was like, yeah, for sure. You know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it uh, it panned out. I don't know. And now mm -hmm. I'm just pumped to have it <laughs> as a thing. Like, I, I love it. It's well, so... Presently, it's cool. do you feel like there's kind of a mission behind it for you, like, or, or at least something you could put into words? Sometimes I wonder with like music shit and DIY and whatever, if I'm just doing it because it's the only thing I know how to do. And I think that's true to some extent. Um, but I think the other thing about it is like, it gives me a purpose and it gives me life. It, it makes mm. me excited about things. And there are other things that I'm excited about, you know, um, my relationship, uh, baseball, uh, going to the beach, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's given me friends in this way that I think is very palpable and very real. Um, and it's given me like connections. I mean, the craziest thing about this whole shit is that I have homies in every city across the country that like yeah. know me. That's and so like, cool. Yeah. I yeah, can, that's such yeah, a cool thing. I could pull up to Jake's house in Chicago. I could pull up to Adrian and Jess's house in LA. I could pull up to John's house in Houston. It's just like, and, and, and the list goes on and on and on. I could pull up to Ryan's house in Atlanta. I'm shouting out all the homies. <laughs> um, hey, guys. But like, that's just kind of how this whole thing works. And it's like, that's super cool. And if that, like, listen, if that's the only thing I'm getting out of this shit, then I'm still going to do it. You know? Yeah. Like, it's like, I'm like pumped on that. I feel like I'd like used hard drugs for so long. <laughs> I'm like, no friends. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait, there's a way to like just have friends and also express yourself. I don't know. It's trippy. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm, 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 uh, yeah, I think that the, the purpose of it is just like, the friends dude straight up like there's no there's mm -hmm. no better feel. i just dropped off this uh this uh batch of tapes for my homies the other night and it just feels so good it's always mm -hmm. like here, here i'm curious go. to know because you said that when you first came to philly you didn't or like it took you you didn't have friends or just the community was different and so 
I'm curious to know like what that journey looked like of like getting to the point where you are now where you have a community and where you've like found real connections with people um, we were just it- gonna I felt like it felt like I was going to the pharmacy to play a show every night um and it was cold and they had no heat in there and it was like really trippy in Point Breeze um just like a really trippy spot in Point mm-hmm. Breeze um mm-hmm. and like playing a bunch of like house shows at Drexel um playing a bunch of uh, and and just like the journey of that is just like meeting all the homies along the way I remember like one of the first people I met was my homie Ethan um who like is still one of my really good friends and he still does a lot um yeah, I don't know. It just, it all just kind of happens over time. And you watch it happen all the time. I mean, there are so many bands that you're like, you see them once and you're like, wow, that was really good. And mm-hmm. then within three years, you notice a lot more people at the shows. And that's the whole thing is just like, if you're participating all the time, people are going to notice you. It's just, it's yeah. inevitable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but cool. breaking through that in the beginning is, uh, very trying uh it's it, it feels defeating because you know especially in fucking philadelphia there's just so many bands and mm. every, it's just like screaming into a void you yeah. know what i mean like constantly um so yeah i mean that just like once you get over that little hump of like okay this is how i do it 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 uh it eventually just starts making sense you start seeing the same people it shows and you're like, hell yeah, I love this motherfucker. And it becomes <laughs> well, cool. Yeah, I think it's a cool thing because I feel like we've experienced this just with going to shows and stuff where like you'll meet someone or you'll see people and they seem kind of standoffish at first or like they just don't want to talk. But it's like everyone wants to talk, you know, and everyone wants to build connections and stuff. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the time it's just about taking that first step and like just like talking to someone. And then straight that up. it's like crazy what that can lead to. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. Yeah, there's I just like a lot of fear around that sometimes i think for people definitely definitely yeah i wouldn't learn any of that without um eh, i'm not gonna get into it whatever but yes <laughs> right yeah <laughs> breaking that yeah there's nothing what like were you gonna much. say i'm sorry <laughs> i was gonna say like recovery and stuff because no like, yeah go for it yeah there was a lot of time in my life where just like i didn't think i could trust anybody or talk to or even just talk to people you know like yeah. nobody would get me or whatever and I think a lot of that that I learned of just like being able to trust is is from recovery but anyway that's a whole other thing um yeah there's no vibe like going to a show alone yeah (laughs) that is like where you're like ah damn nobody wants to go with me I'm just gonna go but it's really cool when you've lived in a place for long enough that you like go anyway and you see 20 people that you know and you're like yeah. oh, okay i'm never really going to a show alone you know what i mean yeah like, we all go yeah. to the same fucking show that's the purpose that's the yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. real. no like, literally just like seeing someone on the street you know and like waving to them is like kind of the most comforting thing ever and i think that's like a really unique thing about philly because it's like just the right size for that to happen especially with the community that's like built around music yeah for sure yeah yeah it's trippy to walk around philly and be like yo see (laughs) you know you know and it is really comforting to just be there's a lot of things that are comforting about living in philly one of them is like i live where all my favorite bands live you know mine is like Mm -hmm. a few for sure but Mm -hmm. like they're important in their cities and that's important for them to be there. That's another thing, you know, I'm not an advocate for people moving to Philly straight up. <laughs> I think we, we've got enough going on here. And too like, many bands. Yeah, too many <laughs> no bands more bands. And, and your town needs you more than Philly needs you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, in fact, some of these motherfuckers got to move away. For sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, like, I don't know there's something really comforting about just like knowing that like I live amongst these people who really like inspire me and you know that's corny but truly mm-hmm. you know when I listen to Null yeah, I'm yeah. like this is like otherworldly how do you how are you when I listen to Menu when I listen to Fib when I listen to Her New Knife I'm just like this is like crazy I don't know whatever 
anyway no, it, it's like a really special thing to like be excited by the art around you and I also think that like with like even like relating it to like picking like bands like to like be a part of like Julia's war like I feel like people can tell that it's just like someone you're excited about and that's yeah. why it like feels so like real and genuine and why people like catch on to it and because it like feels very like I don't know like everyone involved is so unique and like yeah. doing something important yeah. in their space Dude. which really like comes through dude that pisses me off so much when people are like yo it's a shoegaze label and it's like <laughs> no no it's not a shoegaze label at all in fact there's so much more going on than just shoegaze like that's the thing about like tag about too is like everybody just slaps the term shoegaze on it these kids are calling duster shoegaze <laughs> what is going on that's so weird me when and the kids that... start calling duster shoegaze oh no. my god <laughs> Literally. I, know that, like, I know that like in a lot of ways that's a cool thing because it means that like this thing that i gave a shit about for a really long time is finally getting some credibility um but I will say, I think the thing that's happening in Philadelphia is a totally different thing. There's like, not to bring it back to this guy, I know how you feel about this guy, but um, there's like pre-Alex G. <laughs> I was waiting for it to leave I your know. mouth. I was waiting I for know. Alex not, G to leave I was your gonna mouth. Well, you got, you can't, you Wait, can't, we can all say Alex G at the same time. Alex G. Alex G. Oh, uh, you can't. <laughs> the thing is, like, the truth is, like, this is corny as fuck or whatever, but you can't talk about DIY music without talking about him. Like he's just yeah. like, he changed everything. There's like pre and post. And it's so <laughs> weird. Like, I want to say like five years ago, people were being like, this band is an Alex G ripoff band. And it's like, no, there's a whole genre of that. <laughs> yeah. It's like literally he created a whole genre and it sucks that like, the only thing that they can slap on it is shoegaze, you know? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Could have been, like, way cooler somehow. <laughs> anyway, whatever. I, I'm done no, I, I will not mention him again. No, no, no. Feel free to talk about Alex talk G. About Alex G. Never, as much as you Alex want. Alex G on this podcast, yeah. and it's, yeah. like, I'm fine. Alex about... G, if you want to be a guest on the podcast, we'd love <laughs> to have you. Dude, yeah. He's, he's busy. Dude, he's busy and he's he booked. probably hates us. <laughs> yeah. He'd think we're so I annoying. Know, we'd be like, Alex G this, Alex G that. We'd be like, me. we'd be like, POV. Imagine you're walking down the street and you see a pretty girl. <laughs> and he would hate yeah, it. He, he would, would just, hate it. He'd log off. And he would just yeah, X out of the, he would just yeah. X out of the screen immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I did also want to ask, um, we're kind of running out of time, but I wanted to ask about the like julia's war fest it's been two years or three maybe it's I been forgot. three years okay yeah. um, um coming up on the fourth me and samira both were there in the like the recent one it was really really fun i was like covering it for 43 33 so i was like in the like back areas and it was really cool because everyone there was just like really nice yeah <laughs> and like yeah. wanting to be friends and stuff and i was curious like if you plan on keeping it in similar spaces to like yuki club and stuff like that and like more still like on like in like diy terms so like, or if you okay, plan so on like when i first moved here um this fool used to run this fest it was called cat cat fest and it was really cool mm -hmm. um and it used to be at multiple different locations the place that was like the cool spot to go to shows when i first moved here was this spot called everybody hits it was just batting cages on gerard phenomenal spot it was really um is really fucking cool um but the spot used to be everybody hits and then they stopped doing shows probably like right around the pandemic a little bit before the pandemic um but now the spot is yuki club and uh, uh you know listen you just like get in where you fit in like <laughs> yeah last year we did last year we did it at um a warehouse like in the back the first day and that was lit so I think like realistically, like next year, I want to do some other spots, mm -hmm. but you know, it's hard. Cause where do you go? Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Like, what do you do? Union transfer. And it's like, yeah, not, and I'm not ragging on union transfer. I think, you know, I, I fuck with union transfer. It's just like, but is yeah. that like the space for that? Yeah. 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 For like a, like a, a fest of like punks. 
you know, I don't know. so we'll figure it out it's yeah. all it's it's also like i don't start thinking about julie's war fest until like january and I'm yeah. Like, yeah oh my god i have to do this and well then- it's like cool that there's space at yuki for people to like talk to each other because i feel yeah, like that's yeah. like a cool thing about that like space like yeah i don't know it, it was like a very it, it was a really fun event yeah it was <laughs> so like, fun yeah hell yeah i'm glad y'all had a good time yeah because you can yeah. like really tell that the people there are also kind of on the same wave of like being like let's make friends yeah, yeah which yeah, is yeah. like really fun and julia's war fest is my coachella yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it's cool because yeah. we don't have like a lot of festivals in philly so like having yeah, that yeah. is like awesome yeah. but yeah no thank you so much for coming yeah. on yeah. um we have a thing that we do every episode with our guests. Um, if you could take part, because we're known as the Internet is Dead podcast, but we're also known as the Joshua Valle. Please be a guest on my podcast podcast. Joshua Valle is like a Vine guy. He came up with like the uh, I'm Jared. I'm I never Jared learned how to read thing. <laughs> okay. But could you uh, request Joshua Valle for collaboration? Or you, you would just be like, I state your name and then like any credentials you have that might help Hereby request Joshua Valle for collaboration with the Internet This Dead podcast. Please, Josh, be a guest on the podcast. We miss you. I can put it in the chat. Yeah, throw it up in the chat. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I don't know. The, the whole... Dude, I was at this show uh, um, recently, and this kid was like... And I'm talking like a kid, you know. Mm-hmm. They were like, take a picture of me. And I was like, all right, whatever. So she throws up a three. And I was like, put that down. Cause I didn't know what it meant, uh, but it's like a TikTok thing of like. Wait, what is that? Yeah, what? It's I like mean? it's like three is like the only like uh, you're the only one for me or something. It's like some like it's some weird TikTok thing. I am so averse to <laughs> doing things that I don't understand. <laughs> well, I feel like that's smart. You know what I mean? I don't get into cars that I don't know. I don't really do things I don't want to do. I don't know if I want to do this. What it, but I'll, I'll do it. You don't have to if you don't no, want no. to. I'll do yeah, it because I like you. You guys are cool. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. But I don't know I, who this. We I promise it's not a bad just thing. Like a He's guy. just like a YouTube guy. He's just like YouTube guy? a YouTube guy who's been I like offline. I Douglas Bulgarian do not know who Joshua Valle is. For the time. record. For the record. Yeah, Keep but I'll do in. this. But yeah. um, no, it's just like a bit because we're like oh like our whole podcast is about internet culture so we're gonna like do a bit about internet culture where we're trying to get this internet guy on and like feed into fan culture in this way of like you know what i mean i love internet culture yeah (laughs) yeah well i appreciate you uh taking us uh on a whim here yeah Yeah. no sweat no sweat (laughs) we put in the chat (laughs) or i can do you want me to text it to you how do i uh look at the Freaking chat. Okay. All right. Good. Douglas Logarian hereby requests Joshua Bay for collaboration with the Internet is Dead podcast. Please, Josh, be a guest on the podcast. We miss you. Thank you very much. I really awesome. appreciate that. That was great. Yeah. We appreciate you so much. having faith in doing it. Yeah. yeah. I trust y'all. If I end up on a list somewhere, I'm, I'm like, I have your number, Brittany. What we reveal later that it's like, I don't even know. What could it what, yeah, what could be like, the evil what? scheme we're up to? Yeah.